Welcome back to the News of 10. Members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities are to embark on a definite strike action from today, March 23, 2020. The president of the association, Professor Byodun Oguyemi, explains that the action became necessary following the federal government's refusal to address issues raised in its 2019 Memorandum of Understanding. Professor Guyemi, who was addressing journalists in Abuja, said ASU's objection to joining the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, IPPIS, has also not been addressed. Members of the association also took a swipe at the federal government over what it calls poor handling of the spread of COVID-19. A former head of service of the Federation, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita, and eight others have been arraigned at a federal high court on charges of corruption and money laundering. Mrs. Oyoita was arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on an 18-count charge alongside Mr. Garba Umar, her special assistant, Ubong Efiok, and six other companies linked to the defendants. The court granted Mrs. Oyoita to bail, bail in the sum of 100 million naira while Mr. Umar and F. York were granted bail in the sum of 50 million naira each. Tonight, two international airports in the country are expected to shut in compliance with the federal government's directive last week uh, to shut in these two airports. So to international flights, the Muslim Mohammed International Airport in Lagos and the Namdaziko International Airport in Abuja. Let's go live now to our correspondent, uh, Bukola Jo Ketumbi, who's right now at the Muslim Mohammed International Airport in Lagos for an update. Uh, Bukola, tell us what's going on. The international airport is virtually empty at this time. All the counters are closed. As at 10.03 p.m., only two flights were listed to depart. And right now, they are boarding. According to the authorities, on the stroke of midnight, the agency in charge of the airspace will shut the airspace. And according to the Minister of Aviation, only emergency and essential services will be allowed into the country with prior approval. And those flights include humanitarian flights, relief flights, technical flights, or what is described as safety flights. With this um, closure, Nigeria joins a long list of countries, and the International Air Transport Association has listed about $113 billion loss for this industry this year. And out of that, Africa takes $4.4 billion. Our correspondent uh, Bukola Joe Ketumbe, who will be keep whom will be keeping tabs on at the Murta Mohammed International Airport, as she monitors the shutting down of the airport to international flights, um, directive in compliance with the directive by the federal government to shut the airport. We're looking now at images from the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, uh, where. Uh, which is also supposed to be shut to international flights tonight. Um, just a few moments ago, a flight touched down at the airports, and uh, those are probably the last few remaining passengers are currently leaving the airport. And uh, this is the nation's capital, uh, the only international airport in the nation's capital, also shut in a bid to curb the coronavirus epidemic. Let's get some business news now. Here's Teniola Shabuali. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks, Amarachi. Welcome to Business News. Crude oil prices are up more than 5% today, but still trading around $26 per barrel as investors uh, across financial markets assess the impact of massive central bank stimulus. Brent crude traded at $26.16 per barrel after plunging to its lowest level in almost two decades last week. U.S. crude, however, gained 12.9% to trade at $23 per barrel after dropping nearly 25% in the previous session to an 18-year low. But analysts say gains are likely to be temporary as tumbling demand due to the coronavirus outbreak is compounded by the collapse this month of a deal on supply curbs uh, between OPEC and other producers. 
Well, Nigerian stock exchange says trading activities will be suspended due to the recent confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country. NSC in a statement adds that with effect from Wednesday, March 25, 2020, all its trading floors, floors will be temporarily closed while remote trading will continue. It adds that NSC staff will begin a 30-day remote working plan and will be available across all digital platforms to provide support. The statement says dealing members should continue to trade remotely through its electronic platforms such as Fixed Protocol and Xnet and reach out to their compliance officer if any support is required. The NSC also stated that all physical meetings within and outside its office premises have been suspended until further notice. Meanwhile, Monday's trading at the stock exchange resumed on a negative start to the trading week, with the all-share index shedding 2.24% to settle at 21,700.98 points with the year to day losses as mi uh, minus 17.22%. Here is Layo Adigoke with the summary of today's figures. Thanks a lot, Teniola, and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The bears resumed at the Nigerian Stock Exchange as investors fret about the impact of the novel coronavirus outbreak and fall in oil prices. The All Share Index shed 2.24% to settle at over 21,000 points, with the year-to-day losses at 17. Amid the downturn of the market, activity level indicated strong performance. Total volume and value traded appreciated by 20.65% and 10.93% to 457.85 million units and 3.79 billion naira respectively. Sell-offs in Tier 1 lenders like GT Bank, Zenith and UBA placed the banking index as the worst performer, shedding 9 Next is consumer goods, which lost 3.61%. Looking at the activity charts, we see Tier 1 lenders Zenit, GT Bank and FBN Holdings high on the list of top trades. Nimet led 8 other gainers by 10%, while UBA led 25 losers by 10%. And that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Layo Adegoki. Thanks, Lyle. Well, global financial markets are set for another turbulent week as more countries take action to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Let's take a look at the closing figures. And that's business news tonight. It's back to you, Amarachi. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks, Daniel. Now we continue with more stories on the COVID-19 outbreak. The former vice president, Atiku Babakar, is seeking to clear the air on conflicting reports making the rounds on the itinerary of his son, who is presently receiving treatment for COVID-19. Some reports making the rounds claim the son of the former PDP presidential candidate partied at a club in Abuja and attended Friday prayers in the city. In the statement he released, Mr. Bubaker says his son returned to the country on March 17th from Switzerland, after which he attended a private meeting of six persons same day in Lagos. He stayed in his private house for the night and took an Aero 5.20 p.m. flight to Abuja on the 18th. The statement asked that Mr. Bubaker's son did not show any symptoms of infection and voluntarily placed a call to NCDC on arrival in Abuja late on the 18th to inform them that he had returned from a COVID-19 prone country and desired to be tested. On the 19th, the NCDC took his blood sample, which result came positive on the 20th. Outside our shores, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced a three-week nationwide lockdown of the country in a bid to curb the coronavirus outbreak. 
In a televised address to British citizens this evening, Mr Johnson described the rise in number of cases in the country as a national emergency. He says from now on, people will be allowed to leave their houses only when absolutely necessary, and if they do not, will be made to pay a fine. I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households, that is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, walk or cycle, alone or with members of your household. Any medical need, to provide care or to help a vulnerable person, and travelling to and from work, but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That's all. Still ahead on the news at 10 in sports, European football governing body UEFA postpones indefinitely Champions League and Europa League finals originally scheduled for May. Stay with us.